2,955 pounds, little J Flight 174 basic bunkhouse here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. If you've got a small family, or if you're just looking for extra cargo space and a little camper, then I think this one's going to take care of you quite well, especially considering it has Jayco's best in class warranty, which always makes everybody feel pretty good inside. This layout overall is extremely popular in the RV industry. We have layouts like this in the Cherokee Wolf Pup. We have this uh, from Winnebago. Uh, we have this uh, in the past from Passport, uh, Apex. I mean, all kinds of brands build layouts like this. It's a very popular layout. Well, the thing is, though, they're not all identical. Just because the layouts are similar doesn't mean two RVs are really even remotely comparable. They are all going to do little things differently, and that's what I want to try to zero in on here in this video are the tiny differences between them. For instance, things you can't see, or at least not obviously, uh, unless you know what you're looking for. All of our cabinetry in this is all pocket screwed. What that means, an easy way that you can tell, is if you walk over here and pull this door open, which, first of all, these are all hardwood cabinet doors. This is not particle board that has been pressed together. Um, you can feel back here, and you can actually feel how there's a screw holding these two cabinet styles together, or the boxing of the cabinetry, as opposed to, again, compressed particle board that has been just uh, stapled or mitered together. So that is one of those things that, even though this is the most basic travel trailer the Jayco RV builds, it's still built with the same methods as any of their other RVs, including their full-time warranted luxury fifth wheels like a North Point and Pinnacle. So it's just smaller and more basic, and that's what I like about them is the consistency behind their construction. And that's why in this class and category, I don't know of anyone else that matches Jayco's warranty. Their two-year uh, bumper-to-hitch warranty is pretty much unparalleled in that regard. Now, up front here, this is a standard 8,000 BTU air conditioner. And things like our Wolf Pups here, for instance, in a similar class, a similar price point, will have a 13,500 BTU roof air. But... A lot of people will argue, and, I, and I'm not necessarily disagreeing, there is some validity to this, that that is essentially overpowered, that you don't need all that. That being said, those big roof airs, when you buy as many as Cherokee or J-Flight does, they're really not more expensive. But this is two things. It's sufficient. It's more than sufficient, even in southerly climates, for a small box like this. And that's the thing to remember. This is not a big 35-foot, double-slide, huge cubic foot of space J-Flight. This is a tiny J-Flight. It doesn't need all the same big things as big J-Flight when small things work. But it's also not a 5,000 BTU side mount, which is what you do still find in the industry sometimes if you're not looking carefully. It's a standard 8,000 BTU side mount. All of our windows have pleated shades. We'll see some of those in a bit. Uh, all the windows, with the exception of the front window, will open for airflow. The reason the front window does not is it's basically just there for viewing, and it has that exterior, what I like to call, weather shield to uh, you know keep it protected. Little campers... And the concept of privacy are two things that don't typically play well together, but they did what they could here. For the master bed up front, they do provide a full slide across curtain to give you at least a visual line of sight breakpoint, so that if at night you prefer a little more uh, privacy when you're sleeping, because I'm not going to lie, I get weirded out if somebody's watching me sleep. If I wake up and there's eyeballs on me, I'm like, oh, that's weird. Anyway, that's my life. I <laughs> a little peek into the back of my head, but... Uh, to the point, even if you just need an extra place to, like, uh, change some clothes during the day. If you want to lay on the bed, put slide on a pair of jeans or something, and you want some privacy and, uh, you know, not feel embarrassed or something doing it, well, there you go. I've also always believed that storage is one of those things that you'll never get, quote, too much of in an RV. So anytime, especially in a small camper, I see a big chunk of storage, I do like to take a moment to uh, recognize it and appreciate what they're doing here. Now, this is a small, basic camper, so you're not going to see things like um, gas struts to lift up the bed decking there. That being said, guys, that's what I call a screwdriver fix. If the only thing you need on an RV is just a set of gas struts, give our guys a call. Chances are we can work that out. However, having touched a lot of RVs, thousands, over the years, I've noticed that the jack crank makes a very good bed stand. If you need to get down there and not have the thing fall on your head, frankly, it's something that works well and costs you zero dollars. But take a look at the material that we're looking at. Even though this is the most basic camper Jayco builds, the SLX 7 foot wide series, it still has plywood bed decking. Isn't that nice? They're still using better materials, even where they're not expecting you to look. And that's one of those things that I think helps contribute to their longer warranty. Now, uh, again, storage being such a critical thing, when I see a chunk of it, I like to point it out. 
And that's one of the things I really like about the big overhead cabinet they have here on this J Flight SLX. And I like to stick the camera right in here so you get to see it actually is quite deep and functional. Now, uh, you can see how the window is directly across from the bed. That one slides open. The one behind us right now will actually tilt open because it's a fire safety window, but that means great airflow for you in there. Uh, over here, the kitchen, it's simple, but simply effective. And really, I think that's the best you could hope for out of a little camper like this. As before, we do have all pocket screwed cabinetry, so this is stuff that is designed to last longer. This is There's a difference between being less expensive and cheap, or chintz. Because the word cheap could mean chintz, or it could mean less expensive. Um, I think most people, when they hear the word cheap, they associate a negative connotation with it. But in this case, cheap just means the more basic package. So it's just the less expensive bundle. Now, I do like the fact that we have that big floor-to-ceiling pantry and some good, like, pots and pans storage down here with a space for a wastebasket on that right-hand cabinet door. Now, the refrigerator down here, it is gas and electric, but if you notice at the top, the reason I open this is that white box at the top, this does have uh, a freezer box in it. So if you need some extra, you know, a little spot for some ice cream or some popsicles for the kiddos, or for me, perhaps, <coughs> then you've got a good spot for it. If you choose to add a TV, the hookups are here on the wall. Again, more basic camper, so it does have more basic amenities. They, they did not build this with the idea of a 40-inch flat screen in mind. Most of the time, people who get a small camper like this, it's because they're going to go somewhere, they're going to open the awning, and they're going to spend time outside, not inside the RV. Although, nice material selections like this, like the uh, pressed membrane countertop. So it's got that little waterfall edge to it. So there's no open seams where splashed water can get in there and cause any kind of damage. Those are always handy features. On the left-hand side of this overhead cabinet, you'll also find a basic, kind of looks like a car stereo type thing, but just very simple amenities. And here's a little pro tip for you. A lot of campers will have a little button on that stereo that says A or B to turn the inside and outside speakers on or off. The way that you do that on this is you use either your balance or your fade, I can never remember which one, and you basically either balance it total front to back or left to right, and you're essentially kind of tricking the camper into turning on or off inside or outside speakers, or simply using them both. But I figure at some point in a bunk house, we're going to have to talk about the sleeping in bunk arrangements. If you decide to use this dinette as a bonus sleeper to get, uh, you know, capacity up to five bodies here, that being said, this dinette's mostly for a kid and adults. Unless they're a small adult, going to have a hard time fitting on there. You're going to appreciate the uh, nightshade that they have right here to give that person some privacy. Also very handy on a really hot day. And it's not just right here that you'll have a nightshade. You'll have that all the way around. Anywhere that there's a window in this, it's got a nightshade. Um, the, uh, again, dinette here we can fold down into a bonus sleeper. It's roughly about the same size as one of the main bunks, so pretty close to 74 inches. I haven't hard measured this dinette. And uh, a few other little tidbits. Sometimes some floor plans will have storage under the dinette. Sometimes they won't. This is a case where there's no storage under the dinette, but they do have the storage elsewhere, as we've kind of already seen and will continue to see. Instead, what we have here is our furnace, more centrally located. As we pan over to the other side where your converter box is located, I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that there are no floor heating vents in this. This camper is small enough, that furnace is basically the only heat exhaust point. But it's the only thing you need. Kind of like if you have a small room like this and you just put an electric space heater into a plug, the whole room is going to be warm enough pretty shortly because there's just not enough cubic foot of space to require a centralized heat ducting system. Um, also, you might have noticed no carpet and no floor vents, meaning very, very kid and pet friendly. Super, super easy to keep clean. Also very handy for those folks that like to camp off the beaten path. Over here, in the bunk area, at first glance, not a whole lot to see, but it's the fine little details that are easy to miss, like the fact that each bunk has its own light, and this bunk has a nice, big, sturdy handle here to help somebody get up. Additionally, you might notice that Jayco's using bunk mattresses that I used to describe as 50% thicker than industry standard, but frankly, at this point, they're double the thickness of industry standard, not because Jayco went bigger mattresses, because they didn't go smaller like industry standard. Industry standard got thinner, and... Thanks to what Jacob lovingly referred to as the dangler, you can easily see the bunk capacities right here. So that is a 300-pound uh, per bunk uh, sleeping capacity. Understand, though, that does translate into a 200-pound cargo capacity. 
And people will sometimes go, why is the cargo capacity less than the, the sleeping? Because when you're going down the road, you're not sleeping in the camper and you don't have weight bouncing in these bunks. When you're going down the road, that force can quickly turn 200 pounds of cargo for an instant into 600 pounds of cargo, which will stress this. So it's actually overbuilt for the idea of handling that cargo load. Little detail things in the bathroom here, like the fact that we actually have a locking bathroom door. That's something Jayco does really well across the board, although it is quite surprising how few brands actually have locking bathroom doors like this. I did want to take just a step back to give you a peek at it before we go zooming in. I do want to point out that extra ceiling vent here in the kitchen living area for extra heat exhaustion. Um, although the uh, vent hood over here has its own fan system, so that helps. It's just a bonus little skylight in a sense. Very handy for dry camping as well for airflow and light. This is our TV antenna. Um, unlike those old classic crank up jobs, basically all you have to do is turn it the direction you want and scan the channels once if you choose to add a TV to the RV. Back here in the bathroom, it is uh, a little bit chilly at the time of this filming. You might have actually seen some of my frosty breath peeking in here, uh, but that's uh, condensation forming on that mirror right there that during the summertime you will have organically exhausted uh, through several different mediums. And if you're curious about that, give us a call and we can explain that too. But you'll notice both a skylight and a power, uh, or pardon me, and a, uh, a vent up top. And down below here next to the tub, we have a separate toilet. So it's not what's called a wet bath where the toilet is in the shower. And that's what I like to call the three S's, except you can only do two at a time. And that's sit, shower, and shave. And that's S-I-T, sit. You gotta <laughs> watch that one carefully when you're speaking to the public in my line of work. <laughs> and kind of like I mentioned inside, one of the things I really like about these is how consistent they are with their big brother J flights. It's just built smaller. And that's not always the case. I will admit the Cherokee company with their wolf pups does a very good job of making their wolf pups consistent with their bigger gray wolves and Cherokees. But J flights done a very similar job here. Things like you've got that uh, power awning that we'll see out. We already talked about the cabinetry inside. You've still got all LED tail and marker lights, including uh, a version of the J smart lighting system we'll talk about when we get around back. I mentioned when the video began, we do have double the warranty of most anything else in this class with a full two-year bumper to hitch. And there is no such thing as a three-year RV warranty. There are some limited structural warranties, and some of those are very good, some of those are not. You just need to do a little extra research. What they've also done here that I like are tinted windows to keep the sun out of this thing and to give you a, uh, a more comfortable experience inside, both from having more privacy and less heat from the sun. We still have a diamond plate up front, a pretty big one actually. That's another of those things that sometimes gets missed on a basic camper like this. Also, take note of this handy little feature. We've got the handy little wheel for the tongue jack right here. You would assume a lot of campers come with that, but you would actually assume wrong. That's not a standard feature on many RVs anymore. It's something that I sell, you know, for very little money out of my parts shop, but now you don't have to worry about that because it's already included. Uh, so basically, this camper is small enough Especially on flat level land, like if you do uh, want to park it in your garage, which with no roof mounted air, it is easier to get this through the overhead door of many residential garages. Always measure and double check though. Uh, you can easily hand park this thing. So you can actually get it wedged into some uh, corners where bigger campers just wouldn't fit. Now there is going to be a little bit of background noise here. Uh, apologies for that, but we are in a working shop and I can't ask my guys to stop turning wrenches just because I had a chance to run the videos inside. I don't want to slow the things down because we have customers with commitments that we need to meet, obviously. The front window, as we saw inside, makes the RV look bigger, gives it more light. And in a small RV like this, anything that makes it look bigger is great. A lot of times people like big fifth wheels because they have windows in one spot or another. Well, this thing's basically got windows all the way around it, which is pretty darn nice. Um, you might notice how the one uh, window in that location right there is actually tilted open. That is what fire escape windows do for airflow. I don't know if I've ever demonstrated that in my 10 years of doing this here at Halet RV. Crazy. Um, moving on. The uh, uh, tires. Here's a best-in-class feature. You have Goodyear Endurance Radials rated for up to 87 miles per hour at only 80 PSI. And if you don't know what all that means in English, here's what all this means in English. One, they're rated for faster than you should ever be driving with a travel trailer. And two, 80 PSI means you can stop at a gas station and use their air pump system. Uh, you don't have to go to like a specialty industrial tire shop to top off the pressure of your tires. You notice here too, basic camper, but they still have that galvanized steel wheel well above those tires. So God forbid, 
something like debris does poke a hole in that belted radial, that will give you more time to get this thing brought down from highway speeds to, you know, avoid damaging everything. So uh, the spare tire are on the back. That is not something that you can also assume is on every single RV. You'd be surprised how many do not come with spare tires. Additionally, you see the slip cover on it with the big old Jaybird 50. Couple things there. Jayco's one of the few brands that has stood the test of time. They are still, to this day, well, the J Flight is the single most popular series of travel trailers out there um, and has been for like 13 or something consecutive years. It's pretty crazy. And actually, the gap between them and number two, which is the Cherokee RVs that we carry here at Halet RV, it's, it's still pretty big. It's crazy. Now, back here, all these lights. This has the J Smart lighting system. You see these extra lights up top here? When you flip on, say, the left blinker going down the road, most travel trailers or fifth wheels, other than Jayco's, only that light will blink. Jayco spent more money on a safety system here so that when you flip on your left blinker, those upper clearance lights and all associated side marker lights will also blink, just like a semi-trailer. It's crazy that more RVs don't have things like that. Additionally, you see the little white spot in the middle of the tail light? That is the RT in smart lighting, reverse travel. So when you shift into reverse, those are a pair of ridiculously bright, gonna blind you LED lights. So if you are backing into a campsite in the morning, at night, whatever, you can actually see what you're doing. Or if you're at a gas station and some goofball is texting and parks in front of you and you gotta back your way out of that place, people can see what you're doing. It makes sense to them. They don't have to try to figure out what's going on. A couple more things and we'll be all finished up here. Uh, power awning on this little guy. There are still some tiny campers that are still running manual awnings. Not many, but a few. Um, some manual awnings look suspiciously like power awnings, so you really gotta know what you're looking for sometimes. And in Jayco, never an issue, always a standard power awning. It also does have an auto rain dump feature, which is what the little gas strut is over here on the arm. If it's raining quite a bit, Enough load will build up on this arm that it will drop down, spill the water off, and come back up. Or what you can do is you put one of your kids' lawn chairs right here, and then you pull on the arm, spill the water on them, then lock yourself inside the camper laughing at them. And then, But make sure you record it to put it on America's Funniest Videos for $10,000. Otherwise, you'd just be irresponsible. <laughs> if you don't want to do that, though. <laughs> You do have a manual tilt and lock adjust system, and you can see how we do still have LED lighting all the way under that, which is a nice touch on a little camper like this. A couple handy little power outlets over there, and I'll tell you what I'd be doing with that. I'd have a little bubble machine hooked up to that thing, because my kid, you get on a campsite, you fire up the bubble machine, and she will just, she'll go nuts for hours. You could just go to sleep in a lawn chair, and she's probably going to be okay, you know, <laughs> most likely. But more seriously to the point. One other handy little feature that they have on these are a key-alike lock system. So your entry door, the deadbolt, the baggage doors, they all use one key. So you don't need to walk around with a big jingly jangly thing like I do to get into and out of all these campers all day long. You can just have one key on your key ring when you go camping. Simple and easy. Because isn't that what camping is supposed to be? Simple and easy. But that's probably why we do so well here at Halet RV is we make it simple and easy by doing pretty much everything we can for you. Whether it's hitching pieces, parts, trades, finance, truck and trailer package, deals, RV delivery, and everything in between. The only thing we don't do is hidden dealer fees. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping everyone. We'll see you soon.